On the previous video, we were looking at atomic structure and we were establishing the masses of the subatomic particles, the protons, the neutrons and electrons. And we finished off the video with looking at lithium and I used a number seven there for the mass number. And now we're looking at what's actually on the periodic table. So why does it say 6.9 on the periodic table for lithium and not actually 7? How can this be a decimal and a not a whole number? How is it that you can have decimals for mass numbers when these are whole numbers? Remember the mass number is made up of protons and neutrons. So how is it possible to have a mass number of 6.9? Does that mean there's 0.9 of a of a proton or there's not quite a proton in there or not quite a neutron in there? Well no it doesn't. So we're going to look at that in this video. So we need to introduce a new term now. The number that's on the periodic table, the mass number, actually refers to what's known as the relative atomic mass of the atom. By the end of the video we'll have defined this term. There's nothing wrong with mass number but mass number is talking about a slightly different type of um, particle. Okay, so relative atomic mass is what's on the periodic table. So here's the board I used on the previous video. So I'm not going to go through this again. Um, you can always watch the other video back if you want to. But basically, we're dealing with this number here and we are dealing with this term as well. So we're changing this 7 to 6.9 and this term is the relative atomic mass. So the reason we get the decimal 6.9 and not the whole number 7 is because we have different forms of the same atom. So if you, I'm just going to make up something silly here, if you went to a shop that sold elements and asked for a bag of lithium when you got your bag of lithium you would actually have two different forms of lithium inside your bag one of the forms would be just like this one here that we've got on the board now so that's lithium obviously with three protons and three electrons we can't change the protons or the electrons otherwise it wouldn't be lithium it's the neutrons that change. So there's more than one form of an atom. So this form of lithium that we've got up on the board at the moment is what we call lithium-7. That's because it's got a mass number of 7. What's causing the mass number of 7? Three protons. That's what makes it lithium with those four neutrons added on and gets us the mass of 7. So here's the other form of lithium. Can you see what's changed? It can't be the protons, otherwise it wouldn't be lithium anymore. So it's obviously not the electrons either. It's got to be the neutrons. And if you count up the neutrons in the nucleus, one, two, three, we've only got three neutrons now. So that's going to give this form of lithium a different mass number. It's going to give it a mass number of six. So this is called lithium six. So if you went to that element shop and asked for some lithium in your bag, you would have some lithium-7 and you would have some lithium-6. These different forms of the atom have got a name and they're called isotopes. So lithium-6 and lithium-7 are the isotopes of lithium. So what are isotopes? They are atoms of the same element, so they've got the same number of protons, but they've got different numbers of neutrons and that gives them their different mass numbers. So here's our jar of lithium that the shopkeeper's going to get our lithium from when we've asked for it. And what we're thinking is, what I want, we want you to think is, if the relative atomic mass of lithium is 6.9, which of those isotopes must be the most common? And it's obviously the lithium-7 isotope must be most common 
because the relative atomic mass is almost 7. You can see there, there's, I've put 1, 2 isotope 6s is in there, and all the rest are 7s. In mathematical terms, this 6.9 is what's known as a weighted mean. So it's kind of it's kind of an average mass. So taking into account the mass of the isotopes and then factoring in the proportion of each type, so how many are mass six, how many are mass seven, what's that going to give us as a as a sort of average mass, but we call it the weighted mean mass. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at how do you work out the weighted mean mass, which is actually what we call the relative atomic mass. So unfortunately we've had to lose our analogy of the element shop because on the exam it's not going to be given to you in sweet jars, that sort of thing. The information will be given like this. So we've got two isotopes of lithium and the percentage abundance of each isotope is given. So lithium 6, 7.59%, lithium 7, 92.41% and obviously it's this big number here that's bringing the weighted mean close to 7. So if you think you already know how to work this out, how would you work out the weighted mean, then have a go. If not, watch on and let's see if you get it right if you do it first. So there's the formula that we use to calculate the relative atomic mass, AR for short, relative atomic mass. So it's the mass of the isotope multiplied by its percentage abundance. And then you add to that the mass of the other isotope times its percentage abundance. Obviously, if there was a third isotope, you would just stick another bracket on there. And because these have been expressed as percentages, we divide by 100. And there's the answer. So there's our 6.9 that we see on the periodic table. So that's the relative atomic mass because elements don't exist as single isotopes. They exist as mixture of isotopes. Lithium exists as these two isotopes. And so its mass, mass of a typical sample of lithium is 6.9 because of the increased abundance of the lithium-7 isotope. We'll change things slightly with this one. So this time we've got three isotopes of silicon and the numbers, the abundances, aren't percentages anymore. This is sort of raw data. So how would we proceed with something like this? Again, if you think you already know, have a go and see if you get it right. Otherwise, watch on. So just as before, we've got the same top line. We've got the mass of the isotope multiplied by its abundance. Remember, it's not a percentage anymore. Plus the second isotope, plus the third isotope. Got that extra isotope, remember. Now, when we were working in percentages, we divided by 100 because effectively a percentage is just saying for every 100 atoms, this many are um, isotope whatever. Well, this time, because we're dealing with raw numbers, we divide by the sum of these raw numbers. So out of 46 plus 2 plus 1, so out of 49 silicon atoms, 46 are going to be isotope 28, 2, 29, and 1, 30. And if you feed those numbers into your calculator, we get this calculator value here, i.e. 28.1, and that is what we see on our data sheet that we use in the exam. So the relative atomic mass of silicon is 28.1. So I just wanted to show you both ways, just in case in the exam it's given as raw numbers, or it could be given as percentages. So hopefully that's made sense and we'll look at the last part. Why do we use the word relative? What is the significance of the word relative? 
So as I'm sure you appreciate, atoms are tiny, tiny, tiny little things. So we can't really measure the mass of individual atoms. So what we do is we compare them to something else. And that something else is a special isotope and it's carbon-12. This point I need to mention something called atomic mass units. So atomic masses are measured using this, this unit called the atomic mass unit, U for short, and in other words, you know, that's the mass of a proton or a neutron. Remember we said in the first video these have approximately the same mass. So they are given the same mass in atomic mass units of one U. One of those is the mass of a proton or a neutron. And there is the value for one atomic mass unit in kilos. So as you can see, 10 to the minus 27, that's pretty small. So in terms of atomic mass units, the mass of an atom of carbon-12 would be 12 of those atomic mass units because it's got six protons and six neutrons. You might be wondering where I'm going with this, but hopefully when we get to the definitions, you'll see the point of this board. So if the mass of one atom of carbon-12 is 12 atomic mass units, that means a twelfth of carbon-12 is going to be one atomic mass unit. And now we're in a position to look at the definition of relative atomic mass. So that's defined as the weighted mean mass of an atom compared to one twelfth of the mass of an atom of carbon-12. And that's because one twelfth of the mass of an atom of carbon-12 is that magical one atomic mass unit. The weighted mean, remember, is because Atoms don't occur as individual isotopes, they occur as mixture of isotopes. And so therefore, the sample of an atom will have the different isotopes present. And that will obviously affect the average mass. And I'm sure we can cope with this one now. So we have another relative mass definition. And this one's the relative isotopic mass. So... That is basically the mass of this single isotope. So we lose the weighted mean part of the definition because we only have one type of atom now. So that's the mass of an isotope of an atom compared to one twelfth of the mass of an atom of carbon-12. We still need this comparison bit in because that's the relative part. So back to my shop, my element shop. If you could order... Um, lithium-6 isotopes, then you would only have lithium-6 in your bag that you took out of the shop, and therefore they would all have the same mass, they would have a mass of 6. But remember, atoms don't exist like that. They exist as mixtures of the different isotopes, and also the element shop doesn't really exist either. I just made that up. 